The next night, Lourdes made a point of sitting out at the fire pit with Baba. Her jet lag had started to lessen, and a strategy had finally bubbled up from the desperate reaches of her brain. Her past two encounters with Baba and Robert had been total failures, but there was a card she hadn't played yet. It was a card she had often used in interviews, and that was questioning someone about their sexual life. This line of inquiry always opened up new and unexpected windows into a person's psyche. If I could just show Robert that Baba was some sort of weirdo, then maybe I could break the yogi's hold on him, Lords thought. Baba, she said, turning to him. You were married once, right? The yogi nodded. But then she died and now you are celibate, is that right? Most correct. But how do you manage that? Asked Lords, who had been virtually celibate herself for the last five years. Everything is sexual, Lords, Baba answered. There is nothing in sex, and there is nothing without it. What? She exclaimed, disoriented by his words. Everything is the play of polarity, man and woman, day and night, moon and sun. A man who does not enjoy the company of woman is a fool. But the man who screws this one and that has lost the game of life. Why? Lords asked, thinking of her ex. Because he is reduced to his animal nature and there will never be any soul energy in that. That is a cosmic law, and no one can change that. As Lourdes pondered what to ask next, she heard some people approaching. She glanced up and saw a small Indian man accompanied by a Westerner with a blonde ponytail. A sickening sense of helplessness came over her as she noticed that the Westerner was carrying a gun. Ah, Rishi Suraj, Lourdes heard Baba calling out. You are most welcome but the visitor didn't even glance in Baba's direction. Instead, he focused his sorrowful gaze on Alan. You go from the sublime to this? Suraj asked, shaking his head. I gave you the universe, and you go to this one? If someone did you harm in the community, Suraj continued in his lulling voice, just tell me but don't go off like a thief in the night. Your destiny is greater than that, hmm? So tell this teacher that you are coming back with me and we will make everything right. Still, Alan didn't answer him. My son, I gave you my very daughter to meditate with, Siraj said passionately. Speak to me. Alan closed his eyes, feeling a thousand ropes pulling him ever closer to Siraj. His voice sounded so delightful, so inviting. He could feel his mind becoming overpowered. But then suddenly, something broke the spell. No, I'm staying, Alan replied, totally drained by the struggle. Damn you, Siraj shouted at Baba. You fucking snake, must you haunt me forever? Baba looked up and was astounded to see the face of his teacher hovering above Siraj. Then it began dive-bombing at Siraj, who waved his hands frantically trying to protect himself. The samurai ran over to him, gun at the ready. Get away, you idiot, Siraj roared at the bodyguard. Go back to the road and put away that damn gun. I told you not to bring it. For a second, the samurai hesitated. Then he turned and left. And with that, the face of Baba's teacher disappeared. Stay, groaned Baba, but the spirit had left. Suraj moved closer to Alan until he was only a foot away from him. You have made your choice, Suraj began, his voice now full of menace. So I will tell you now what kind of man you have chosen. He is a fugitive. People want him dead, oh yes. That is why he must lay low. He brings pain to everyone and will bring it to you. I thought you were made for something better, Suraj ended, making a disdainful gesture with his hands as though washing himself of the whole matter. Then he left. Lords watched as Suraj departed, counting the hours that she would have to remain in this dreadful country. But her infernal curiosity had been piqued. Why do people want you dead? 
she asked. I have seen too much, Baba replied in a tired voice. But now, it is no longer safe here. When I was at school, the nuns taught me that a line was drawn at the Alamo. Now I am drawing it. Leave with my blessings, or stay and bear the consequences. Count me in, Alan replied immediately. Me too, Robert said, as Cuttam nodded as well. No, you're not, Lord stood up and raged. You're coming home with me now. Robert slowly shook his head. Robert, Lords exclaimed, I said we're going. You are, not me. This is my Alamo. Furious, she turned on the yogi. Make him come, she demanded. He is grown, Baba replied simply. In that moment, all the miserable events of her trip flashed before her. She had gone through this third world gauntlet only to be kicked in the teeth by her son. You do bring pain, Baba, she said in her most steely voice. He'd be home now if it weren't for you. You play at being such a holy man, but you've poisoned him against me. I'm going to pack now, Robert, she added sadly. If you love me, you'll leave as well. With that, she walked away. Baba hardly heard her go. All he could feel was the agony that his teacher was no longer here. After a few minutes, he glanced up at the two Westerners. What do you say to the angel of death when he comes? Baba asked, as the two of them glanced uneasily at each other. Answer, Baba demanded. I would say that I've tried to be a spiritual being, Robert answered. And you? Baba asked Alan. I'd say I'm ready. You give such rote answers, Baba said, missing his teacher too much. You tell the angel, what the fuck has taken you so long? Alan glanced up at Baba, more perplexed by his teacher's mood than the message. All right, Baba sighed, finally turning to other matters. Talk to your aunt, settle her down, go. Robert got up and began walking quickly towards Lord's room. And you, come here, Baba said patting the rock next to him as Alan sat down. If you want to help us, here it is, Baba said, taking a small notebook and pencil from his robe pocket. Wire $30,000 to this bank in Amritsar, Baba said, handing him the paper. Alan looked at the yogi, stunned. Like many rich kids, he had always been super sensitive about people hitting him up for his money. And now there was this relative stranger, asking him for 30 grand with the nonchalance of someone asking for the salt. What's it for? Alan asked uneasily. Doesn't matter, Baba replied. What do you mean? Alan asked, laughing at the absurdity of the yogi's response. Teacher has asked, Baba replied. Now step across. Baba then got up and departed, leaving Alan not sure if he was being conned or not, and most unsettled by the fact that he didn't seem to care.